So let's go over some tips for Scarborough Fair. This is an easy fingerstyle arrangement for classical guitar or steel string fingerstyle, whichever you play. And follow the lesson for free, but of course, if you're interested, I do have an edition of the piece, so you can go to the link in the description to find a PDF version of it. What I'll say first is that whenever you have a song with a very strong melody, in this case a vocal melody, uh, practice that melody on its own and make sure you get all the shaping and phrasing um, really solid with just playing the melody on its own. Once you've done that, then you can add in all the bass notes and all the chord accompaniment, uh, but you want to keep that mel melody both prominent and phrased really nicely. So at starting at bar five, Practice that melody until it's the way that you want it, the way you think it should sound. And then when you add in the rest of the notes, just keep the quality of that melody up really nice and high. Don't sacrifice it just because you're adding more notes. You want to make sure that the thing that people are listening to, the melody, is very prominent, very clear, and, and very nice, regardless of what you add to the piece. So now I'll just kind of run through the piece a little bit slower, just so you can see what's going on, and I'll just talk a little bit as I go. So it starts off with a chord accompaniment of just, you know, basic A minor, G, E minor, A minor, just using P, I, M, A accompaniment. And then the melody starts at bar five, and make sure that your melody is the loudest, then the bass voice, and then the accompaniment. So the melody, loudest, the bass can be fairly loud, not overpowering, but you want a good resonance underneath the sound and it's far away from the melody so it won't interfere. But then all the inner accompaniment, especially with your eye finger here, um, can be very, very soft, and especially in bar six. Soft, soft. Um, you don't want the accompaniment to be pounded out because it's pretty close to the melody so it would interfere sometimes. So keep your everything but the melody quite suppressed. So bar five. That's just a shift up into third position. Just make sure you're keeping your hand position secure and you can use that, that first finger, that first string as a guide string to guide your finger up. If bar 13 to 14 gives you trouble, just leave out the last note. And then just move on. And 
and then it repeats back to bar five. And the outro at the end is the same as the intro. You have your A minor chord, G, E, and then an A minor, but we end with just a strum or something like that. In terms of right hand fingering, most of the time I'm playing the melody with these two fingers, and then the bass, of course, with the thumb. Um, and then the majority of the inner accompaniment with, with the eye finger, but it really just depends on which bar we're talking about. But nevertheless, you, as long as you're keeping fingers free for the accompaniment, you're usually fine because it's usually just one note at a time in my piece. So as long as you don't repeat fingers, you're doing just fine. Um, I would just recommend that you use A a lot for that melody. Not at the beginning, but especially when it goes up to here. So there I go A, M on the top, and then I, M, A. And that's the thing, it's just, you're trying not to repeat fingering, uh, any right hand fingering, um, but because the piece is pretty minimalistic overall, there's not too much danger of that. So just do your best with that. It's not a fast piece, so it's not the end of the world if you repeat a finger, but try to avoid it if possible.